Uh, thank you, Scott. I've been combing the chat uh, to see if we have additional questions. It looks like it's predominantly comments, so we'll be certain to save those comments. Um, I think uh, Nick had uh, some concluding thoughts to offer from the developer. Yes, thank you, Kathleen. I wanted to just take a second and um, just talk about hockey for, for two or three minutes. So if we could, you can see my screen here. Um, we, first of all, everybody, we appreciate the support. Um, we know this is this is change in the valley, but um, the groups that are involved here um, have a have community in mind. Certainly, first, my name again is Nick Fora. I'm the president of uh, soon to be your American Hockey League team here in the valley, and I just want to touch base with a couple slides on what the American Hockey League is. Um, a lot of folks, if you haven't been to a game, um, hockey is the best live sport out there. Um, if you've never been to a game when we open up, you contact me and, and um, you'll, you'll come and I'll get you tickets. Michael, who just spoke here a few minutes ago, um, you could have almost done my presentation. One of the reasons um, why the Seattle Kraken and this ownership group looked at uh, the Valley was the synergies. Um, when you look at the overnight stays of domestic fly markets, Seattle being the number two market just made a ton of sense. There are um, a lot of synergies between both of these areas. Um, Michael also mentioned Las Vegas um, coming online as the 31st NHL team a few years back. The Seattle Kraken, we were awarded to be the 32nd franchise um, just about three years ago. And um, it's probably been regarded as one of the um, one of the biggest brand launches in all of sports um, that we've seen, not only from a revenue standpoint, from the beautiful Climate Pledge Arena that we're building here, um, but the impact in the community in, in this in the entire area. For those of you who don't know a lot about the American Hockey League, um, it's it's fantastic, fantastic hockey. Um, we will be the, the main development team for the Seattle Kraken, as mentioned, and it's probably one of the under most under-marketed uh, leagues out there as if you watch any NHL game um, on TV tonight, 85% on average of those players on the NHL ice have played on this league. Um, so our, our GM, Ron Francis, and his entire group will, will essentially draft this club personally. And a lot of these players may be playing on a Thursday night in your brand new beautiful arena, and you'll see them in Seattle as they take their journey uh, to the NHL on possibly a Saturday or Sunday. Currently 31 teams in the league will be the 32nd. A little bit about the competition in the Pacific Division that we would play in. Um, there's currently uh, five teams within California alone. We'd be the sixth. And this is what the division and those NHL affiliates would look like. So a lot of, a lot of close competition uh, just within the state of California alone. And then last but not least, this has been touched on, but um, this, this project uh, has a lot of ripple effects, um, positive for, for many in the entire valley. One of them is there's a reeling uh, ice community as has been mentioned between youth and adult hockey, figure skating community at the old rink um, that shut down last year. It's not coming back. Um, so we, we really look at this main sheet of ice along with this second training and community rink um, as a community trust. So we are here to grow the game. So these families don't have to travel an hour and a half to either San Diego or or L.A. Um, to play. They deserve a world-class facility, and we we are really looking forward to building um, community events. Again, just another just another way we can we can bridge the community, bring them in this facility, and we're we're really excited. So, just a few just a few comments, Kathleen, and thank you for having me. And if you could stop share. Uh, this has been great. Uh, we've had lots of participation. Everyone has been highly respectful. You're a model group. And I want to assure you that uh, the city of Palm Desert intends to play a very, very constructive uh, part in the continuing process uh, toward hopefully achieving all of these economic 
and lifestyle uh, benefits. Uh, from our perspective, the worst thing in the world would be to wear such rosy colored glasses now that we failed to think about or prepare uh, for any downsides and then became shocked uh, by those. Uh, so we're, we're playing the role of assuring that those things are thought through so that the benefits are experienced to the full extent possible. And I'll invite our city manager, uh, Dodd Heilman, just to acquaint folks very, very briefly uh, with some of the topics that we're sure can and will be addressed. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, we, we currently have staff looking over the, the 2000 page submittal that we received last month. And, and I'm, I'm confident that most of the technical details can probably be worked out. And that's certainly the position that we're taking. Uh, like some of the comments that we heard today, we are concerned with what happens to Barner Road if it gets overwhelmed, what's the plan? Uh, same thing with the Cook Street interchange. So the traffic management plan goes a long way in terms of moving traffic. But I think a couple of things that we're really focused on and we need to get worked out in the next uh, the next couple of weeks, um, you know, is really the impact of public safety. What we've learned in our research, it's not so much the impact on the site. It's the, the folks that are leaving the facility. And, you know, when we've spoken with our colleagues in, in other cities with these size types of arenas, the number of collisions that they're that are taking place after the games adds up. It, it takes away police and fire resources to those calls. And it's having a real impact uh, on some of these communities. Ontario is a good example. You shared a lot of data with us. So we want to, both of our, our fire um, liaison, our sheriff's department liaison are both uh, convinced that it's going to require some additional personnel uh, that we need to make, uh, we need to understand what that means. And the police side, it's about a net $2 million a year worth of additional staffing potentially. Uh, on the fire, it's far more. One of the issues we're dealing with is that this particular area, and I think this is important for folks to understand, this particular area is being served from two stations that do not meet the current level of standard of four minute response time. So if the, if the facility to serve it has to be built at Frank Sinatra, and cook, that's going to mean Palm Desert taxpayers are brought along with it with not, without the revenue to sustain the fire operations. And that's our big concern. It's 15 to $16 million to stand up and equip a new station and about $3 million a year of ongoing expenses that we quite frankly don't have in our budget right now. So we're trying to figure out exactly where the facts lie in terms of the impact on the arena. If, if in fact, uh, it does have the kind of impact on our public safety services to serve our residents, and we have to absorb those dollars into the budget. What does that mean and what is the plan? So it's been sort of, um, you know, there's a lot of positives to this. Uh, and, and I think we all we all live on TOT out in the valley. We get it. Um, but there's also some real ongoing issues on the other side. We don't see the revenue coming close to offsetting our public safety costs at this point if we have to add a new station and some of these uh, new equipment uh, for, you know, that it looks like we're going to have to deal with. So very real issues to be dealt with. Um, and I'm going to ask Mr. Bolton and his team to, uh, to kind of reach out and see if we can't uh, uh, work through some of these issues. But uh, we, we need to, if we can get these issues resolved, I think that we have an easy time uh, talking to the city council. But as, as the mayor said, we'd rather deal with it now than get surprised later and be in a, be in a really serious financial position. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has participated. Uh, this has been extremely helpful and meaningful. I'll ask uh, Thomas Sowell uh, to share some information on the screen about the county's uh, process from this point forward. Uh, so those who want to express themselves more uh, know how and when to do that. And uh, Supervisor Perez, do you have any concluding comments? Yeah, I just want to say thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, City Council, staff, uh, for organizing this forum. I think it's an important forum to have. 
also want to thank John Bolton and and his entire team at Oakview for the great work that they've done so far, especially the outreach and the educational efforts, the presentations. Uh, that's all necessary. Now, I want to let folks know that as a county supervisor, I think of the entire county on one aspect of it all. And then I also think about the fourth district, obviously. And ultimately, when we talk about economic development opportunities and projects like these, I also need to be a good neighbor. Although this project is on county land in Thousand Palms, I wanna to listen to the concerns of all our residents. I think that's very important. Um, there's a lot of great opportunity coming as a result of this project. We heard it here. I was watching the chat, reading the chat uh, comments that were brought up uh, and a lot of great information and a lot of great views as to why this project is important. I want folks to know that I am 100% fully behind this project uh, uh, and have asked county staff to assist uh, in any way, shape or form to move this project forward. But as a good neighbor, I also asked staff to put a hold on moving forward with the planning commission, which was going to be this Wednesday because I knew that our city of Palm Desert uh, still wanted to have this forum and wanted to review all the documents, wanted to have that time to review those documents. Uh, so we will be having uh, the planning commission hearing on this project on May 5th, I believe, uh, which was presented to you earlier. Uh, and as well, it was important for me to hear the concerns around Barner Road, around the Portola ramp, around the transportation management plan, around increased potentially of collisions, uh, around overflow uh, when it comes to parking. What does that plan look like? Uh, concerns around earthquake ratings of the facility, potential options for public transit, uh, overall public safety impacts. I think those are all great points that were brought up by our constituents, by all of you. Um, and so we'll be working those through over the course of these next few weeks. And uh, my goal is to get this passed by the Planning Commission early May. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, staff. Uh, thank you, City Council Palm Desert and all the folks from Oakview and our residents. Thank you, Supervisor. And uh, thank you for everyone who has participated. Uh, I see many of the Coachella Valley's finest on the participant list and you know uh, that the Coachella Valley has a strong history of regional collaboration and good government and I'm sure we'll apply both of those traditions to a good outcome in this case. So thank you all for tuning in. <laughs>